Hey, it's Layla from Miss Layla Pink Journey. I'm going to try to show real quick how I um, put my letters on the bunny's ears. A girlfriend asked how I do it, so I thought I would share a video real quick. I hope it's quick. So what I normally do is I um, remove a few stitches, a few of the first stitches from the ear. Sometimes I do the ear. I don't always remove the stitches, but she wanted to see how I do it when I remove stitches. So... I start off like with any project when you sew on, just remove a few stitches and that'll break the barrier. And then you can start um, removing more stitches. Just a few at a time. <laughs> there you go. See, it's not that hard at all. I just didn't have it angled correct trying to see and not lose focus from the camera. Stitches, they just come right out, see? If you do it right. So I'll finish removing these stitches because this looks like a painful process to watch. And I'll be right back. You can also get in here. You can see the stitches in there. And get to a few of the stitches from here. Just get your actual seam ripper in to remove a stitch or two from here. You don't want to rip the fabric. And that will help you to remove a few stitches as well. Makes it much easier. And then see how it just comes right apart. And you just need enough for where your bunny ear will lie flat on your um, hoop when you're ready to hoop it. So there she is. Next up, I have a tearaway stabilizer that I'm going to cut the size of my hoop here. I normally just lay my bottom hoop down and cut the size, unless I use pre cut. To my hoop station. I'm just going to hoop this here. Because I don't want to move the camera and all of that. So it's, it's hooped pretty tight. I don't even think I... I moved the money because I didn't show how easy it is to hoop with the Mighty Hoop, even without the station. But the station is awesome. So... I do suggest the station also. But so you just um, lay your stabilizer down and make sure you have enough stabilizer to cover your entire hoop. And then I have to move it back away from the machine. And then you want to just take your magnet and that's hooped now. And so you have a nice taunt stabilized um, product. So I've taken my hoop off to the side and I have sprayed it with spray adhesive because I don't spray around my machine. And now and everything catches on to these hoops because they're magnetic. I'm going to um, place my hoop onto the machine. I already have my colors. The um, thread I'm going to use is already on the machine. I'm going to move my um, machine back so that I can lay the open bunny ear down onto this 
station that I have sprayed. I use little things to show me what my centers are and there's different points on the hoops and that's what helps me show my centers. So there's one at the top and that'll be my center for this ear. I think I oversprayed. For sure I oversprayed. And I just lay her down and I'm going to use the bottom to see if I got it in that center. Look like it's pretty much centered. I think I'm going to bring the ear up some more. After this bunny, it's going to be time for me to change my oh, needles for sure. I really oversprayed. But let's see what it does. I never use that much adhesive, but trying to rush. All right. Just lay her down. I lay the fur down like that. So I will lay that down. Oh, I could have saved a lot of that stabilizer, but it's it's a done deal now. So I'll lay her down like that. The adhesive will help it to lay down some. I think that ear is straight. So next I will. my hoop back in. Hit OK. And so now I can um, set everything up. Let's see if you can. The lighting is kind of weird in here today, but I just wanted to show you on my screen where I am going to actually rotate the design. And so I hit set. And I will rotate the design to make sure that the ear, that the design is laying the way that I want to come out um, for the actual ear. And if it's not, once I do my little look around, I'll just rotate it again until it is how I want it. So I have to go back to my actual bunny to take a look. So to help my friend who's having issues with getting her bunny set up and, and just having issues with figuring out how to get this going. I, I wanted her to know that I always, most of the time I print out a printout of whatever it is that I'm going to um, stitch. I print it out of in brilliance. And so I have, I, I print out the shape of the bunny ear since that's what I'm dealing with, the bunny ear. But you know, in brilliance it gives you the actual um, crosshair of what's going to happen. So that's very helpful. And this way I know that I want the bunny ear to stitch this way so I can just put it right in like this and say, okay, I want the bunny ear to stitch this way to make sure that my lettering is going in the direction that I want it to stitch out in. So that, that's going to help me a lot. And um, if you don't have a printer, if you don't have, um, if you're not using a brilliant software, so maybe you don't have that option, Another thing I was telling her she could do, I also would use something like these. Um, you can make, well, if you have, you have still have a printer, but you can write it down. So I have, I make myself templates to know I want my print to go this way. I mean, you have to do what you gotta do. I'm very visual, so I need things to show me which way I need my template to go up or down or which way I need to go so that I'll know which way I'm printing something or how I need to lay down on a shirt or whatever it is I'm doing it on. So this helps a lot. They have little stickers that you can purchase and, you know, things, whatever can, you know, whatever can help you, you just have to do that. 
Um, another thing is, if you don't have a clicker, that you can also grab tape. Just you grab some tape from the store, painter's tape. And if I had to, I would put the painter's tape right down on that ear while I'm trying to figure out how I wanted to lay. And I can say I want the phrase to go that way and then I want the arrow to go up or down. The next thing I'll need to do is I will need to trace um, when I use the Mighty Hoops, this machine doesn't know the sewing field size. So I want to trace the sewing field to make sure that I have enough space in there to for my design and also to make sure the design is actually in this ear section. I'm trying to make sure you can see that. Um, let me see if I can bring it down just a little. I've actually turned the light off temporarily just to see, or one light off, just to see if you'd be able to see the crosshair down there for the um, machine, and you'll be able to see how I trace it. So I hit the trace button on my machine, and it'll trace how far out it's going to actually print. And they'll let me know if I need to resize this design and I can resize it on the machine before I actually print it or stitch it. I meant print, stitch it. <laughs> so it will let, let me know if I need to resize it, which I do, it's too big, or I need to move it up. Let me move it up this way a little bit and let's see what happens. Because with the Mighty Hoop, the machine doesn't know if it's going to hit the wall of the bracket or not. So you have to be the judge of that for the mighty hoop. And let's come over some. It's looking better without resizing so far. Let's try that again. I'm moving it up a little bit more towards the end of the ear. So I'm not afraid to make the design actually smaller if I have to, um, if it's too big from what I created in, in Brilliant Software, then I will just resize it here on the machine if I have to take it out of the USB out and resize it on, on the computer, I will, but this machine can resize up or down uh, over 50% or something like that it, it, without distorting the design. So that's that's a plus. And I try to do a trace. Once I think it's good, I do another trace three times <laughs> before I actually start stitching just to try to get it right. And I'm just going to move it up and over just a little bit because I still get a little more room. This little bunny head is in my way. I can't see it over there. Let me see one more time. I couldn't see what happened up here. We're going to use gold, gold and yellow is one, and number two is this pretty world blue. Get my speed real slow just to make sure I got my stitches where I want them to be.
Okay, it's all done. So let me click OK. Here's my little template. Let me just remove as much of the um, water soluble stabilizer as I can with my hand. And I just pull off the ear. So that's what it looks like on the back before I remove the remaining um, tearaway stabilizer. So I have to go through, I have to get my tweezers and things and remove as much of the tearaway stabilizer as I can. And this is the front. And I usually remove as much of the water soluble stabilizer as I can. And of course, I'm gonna, I only have one jump stitch to cut there. And once I remove as much as I can, I just grab my iron and um, I, I take a spritz of water with my um, spray bottle and a paper towel and I just put it right on top and iron right over that and that knocks off the rest of the water soluble stabilizer. I don't have to fuss with it a lot when I use the right type of water soluble stabilizer because they are all not the same. Um, so this is a good stitch out. And when I'm done, I'm either going to sew the ear back together to this, simple as that. I'm either gonna sew it just like it was on my sewing machine. Another thing that you can do is you can grab um, Seamusteam, which I have some of that also. You can put Seamusteam around the ear and you can press it back together press it down and um just it'll it'll adhere to the um each side of it like a glue that's what steam seam does it, it adheres seam seam will adhere the fabrics to each other very simply it's not a difficult process but if you're not comfortable with taking the ear apart i have done plenty of these bunnies without taking the ear apart. I've had many friends and families who are just fine with having the uh, bunny ear stitched through. Sometimes there's just more ways to do things than one. So you have to do what's comfortable to you. If you are not comfortable with taking the ear apart, then you just aren't. Just going to remove the rest of those stitches in there. And then I'm going to figure out whether I'm going to stitch it back together or if I'm going to um, press it back together and I will let you know which one I decided to do. Decided to go with the steamer seam so all I did was I just um, grabbed the different little areas of the seam. I haven't pressed it yet but I just laid down pieces of the steamer seam. Let me see if you can see it. That steamer seam right in there you can see the um, bumps on it. I just laid down the steamer seam and then pull the top piece off of the steamer seam. It's the cover sheet. And then you'll just lay your fabric down over it. And then you're going to go ahead and iron over that. And then I'll, I'll grab when I iron, I'm going to um, iron with uh, parchment paper, which I usually use parchment paper or I use. Um, a blotting sheet or some sort all the time but today I'm also going to spray a little bit um, of water right across the top of my design here so that I can get the rest of the um, water soluble stabilizer off of the actual design and that should remove just about all Seam of steam worked just fine for today's bunny Next time I'm going to stitch straight through the ear like I do most times. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. 
I'll leave a link below to some of the products that I use today. Have a great one. Bye.